Ritcast. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. It is the Rantcast podcast, live on Twitch, not live anywhere else. Tonight, unfortunately, Strange Bus couldn't make it. Uh, he sends his regrets. We wish him well, of course. Got some work stuff to do. But tonight on the Rantcast, <laughs> we got Ribby. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, if anybody is here live wants to jump on the Discord with us uh, to contribute to the show, happy to have you. Uh, let me just get rid of the flames here, because the, the real flames are coming here soon. We basically just got, uh, whenever Strange Bus isn't here, we basically got an extended HeroQuest Power Hour. Um, we do have a few things to discuss, and I've tried to kind of keep up through... Um, XSC3 home of HeroQuest fans on YouTube through the little community link that maybe not a lot of people look at. What's tonight's rant? War Chant Rantcast. I can pop in. Yeah. Hey, Jay, sir. Hey, Ribby. Yeah, so tonight, uh, let me just get rid of the flames and you'll see it's HeroQuest clickbait. First light slash no Brazil. I was uh, trying to come up with a catchy title, but yeah, we basically got uh, a couple of different topics here tonight. So this should be episode 34. So I'll just kind of start right in. Um, we have another expansion. So after the controversy, which was blamed on me, rightly or wrongly, because I did for a brief time uh, give credence to the speculation that maybe Hero Quest was winding down. Maybe we were about to see the last official expansions coming out. I don't believe that anymore, but at the time, it was kind of a hot emotional topic. So anyway, people were saying, well, maybe Against the Ogre Horde will be the last official release. It wasn't, clearly. Uh, we have Jungles of Delthrak coming out. We still haven't had any more realistic pictures or reliable info, just kind of the same old stuff. But it hasn't gone away, so I'm fully confident that we will see the Jungles of Delthrak as the next Hero Quest expansion, big box expansion sometime in uh, August, September. I mean, they keep saying August 31st. So if that's the case, I fully expect it to see it, see it on full display at Gen Con this year, which is August 1st through the 4th in Indianapolis, Indiana. I plan to be there again. This will be my second, second time going to the show. Um, several people from the HeroQuest fans community will be there. I even have um, on good authority that a certain... Uh, Amalgamash uh, may or may not be there, and he may or may not be dressed as a pirate. So I just want to say, give that guy a lot of credit. Uh, we tease him a lot on this uh, the stream and other streams, but he's got a good thing going. We wish him well. And hey, I would love to see some of his interviews with the Avalon Hill people. We also have learned that uh, Chris Nato, uh, Lord and Carmine, uh, who was introduced on this uh on the rant cast he just popped in that one time and ever since then we had that community outreach until unfortunately he was part of the group of employees that were laid off um from hasbro before christmas last year anyway he has a new job new position at tops at fanatics so i'm not a super, super big into collecting sports memorabilia. That's kind of what I associate them with. I'm sure they do other things besides just baseball cards and things, but I mean, we wish him well. It is a big company. I'm sure he'll do great. Um, don't have word on what Avalon Bill is doing these days when he's um, able to share that. But yeah, we wish those guys well, of course. In the meantime, we carry on. We carry on. So let's just see what who we've got tonight. Yep, Ribby's here. Hey, Ribby. Hello. Welcome to the Ritcast. It's time. Yeah. Three minutes of playtime. Well, hopefully more than three minutes. That's about all you can take. Three minutes of rant time. Yeah. Yeah, going nowhere. So... We've got all this stuff, and uh, yeah, so definitely check out AshQuest, check out Dungeon Master in German. Um, several people have covered this material. Um, Cristobal on LaGuardia de Morcar has covered it. So the um, this file, did you get a chance to see the file, Ribby, the, uh, the PDF? 
showing for for what? Uh, it's E A N. Here, I'll show you what I'm. Oh, you just about. posted that a second ago, didn't you? Yeah. So Hasbro. Yeah, me, took, I'm gonna look at it right now. Hasbro took this file down. So this is a PDF file. It's called E A N dash Hasbro. So it's real. It's 100% real. This is not some April Fool's joke. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is like their list of products. This whatever. is 100% legit. So I feel like, okay, so this, I just want to say this from the outset, okay? So people don't think that I'm, you know, the rumor mongering doomsayer guy. HeroQuest will keep being sold as long as it's profitable. That's what they've always said. That's what I'm sure Avalon Hill guys would say today if they were allowed to say it. <laughs> um, unfortunately, though, it looks like their outreach to the community has diminished significantly. Their presence seems to be limited these days to Instagram and X. And usually it's like, hey, updates coming soon. And then they just point you to the Hasbro Pulse page or they point you to the next big convention that's coming out. But occasionally we get these leaks. So it's kind of like, I feel like we're going back to the beginning, <laughs> back to the early days when we had to just scrounge for info, just any little tidbit, and then occasionally just a leak happens. And it's like, are these leaks on purpose? <laughs> oh, but whether it's on purpose or by accident, we're grateful that it's there because without this, we wouldn't have any info. It'd just be like, oh, six months later, oh, there was a new release. So I don't know. <laughs> Feel free to chime in here because I'm just kind of going. Oh, I was going to just kind of show you what's in this file. I did post on the Heroes Quest fans Discord. I mean, it's a, it's out there. So, we've got these numbers. I did, I did briefly look through this. I, I didn't uh, yeah. put too much thought into it. Hero, yeah, there's, there, I mean, there's nothing to see. It's just, just numbers and, and yeah, title. Just a name, yeah. But it well, like... we know jungles. I mean, we have, we we can jungles we can uh, like... sort of uh, infer what's going to happen there. Some yeah. kind of jungle jungle temple theme. Something to do with Delthrak of and jungles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But but you think about Hero Quest. What is Hero Quest really? It it's a callback to all kinds of like fantasy tropes from the late '80s, early '90s. So you can imagine it's probably drawing on things that people think of. I mean, yes, they try to put their own little stamp on it. That's what Hasbro wants to do. That was all over the HeroScape release. It's like, okay, we want you know trademarkable. IP stuff that we can really sell, but it's like, okay, well, what do you have in your fantasy stuff? You've got deserts, you've got castles, you've got dungeons, you've got frozen wastelands, you've got jungles, you've got temples, <laughs> you know, tombs, crypts, whatever, swamps. So that's in there. But yeah, if anybody thinks the jungles of Delthrak is fake, that it's not real, that it's not coming out, that it's just a code name, I think we can put that to rest, even if the box in image is fake excuse me <laughs> but then we've got this other one which of course has been covered by lots of people now it's hero quest first light so when that comes to light uh at first what do you yeah. think yeah. Good. this guy okay <laughs> what do you what do you think go, go ahead uh unleash your speculation i know you press immediate it. thoughts i mean obviously immediate thoughts go to like a priest a cleric a paladin I stand along for the lines. light. Although it's probably nothing to do with that. For the honor of Azeroth. <laughs> um, it's hard to say. It could literally, because, I mean, you know, it, it could literally just mean some... It could mean anything. Some, yeah, it could mean anything. There, there's almost no point in speculating. Yeah, but but is it safe to say that there is no, there's nothing from the legacy of Hero Classic Hero Quest called First Light. No, this is something no, not that I can recall. New original. I, I don't recall reading anything in the lore or anything about like the no. light, the first light, anything like no. that. So, but it suggests totally, totally new ground. It suggests so much. Yeah, and that's the thing. And without Encarmine or Avalon Bill or you know somebody to drop some hints on us, we had no way of guessing i mean it's like okay so it's not wizards of morikar <laughs> it's not the dave morris novels it's not you know the japanese quest so what is it it could be anything so yeah. i had a, i had a couple of ideas probably all wrong but i'm just going to get them out anyway um first light so a couple of suggestions were that there it has connection to some other game out there that has the words first and light in the title like talisman what do, what do you think of that idea 
Talisman has light in it. I don't really know anything about Talisman, so I couldn't tell you. It's a popular game that apparently has, I mean, it's a fantasy board game, but it has yeah, a lot more randomness. Yeah, super into it. Yeah, Seek Hashem, big, big time Talisman guy. So if you want to know the, the 411, definitely hit him up. Uh, so how does how does First Light connect to Talisman then? I guess I don't Apparently that. there's a First Light or Light in Talisman. So people are thinking, well, there was this uh, social media post from Avalon Hill, very crypti- tr- cryptically asking the audience, what are your thoughts on some IP crossover with EuroQuest? What would you think of that? And I don't That's know what everyone right. came they up did with. do that. But people were saying, well, what's what's the most likely scenario if they were to do some type of crossover? Would they license out something really expensive from some other brand, or would they just go in-house? So It would have to be in-house. Oh, yeah. why not? You, you've got D&D. You've got Magic the Gathering. Why would yeah. you li- license anything other than that? Harry Potter or, quest. Or now, apparently, Talisman, since they're coming out with a new version of Talisman. Yeah, so new that version would be a of good Talisman, tie-in. new version of Heroescape. And it's like, instead of just having, you know, what people do anyway, which players just take their two games and put them together and make their own homebrew, it's like, oh, some type of official package. That's That'd be interesting in that, you know, you, we could um, we could bring in monsters and stuff from these other games and yeah. incorporate them into your quest. That'd be cool. Yeah. And the thing is, you always could. It's just that this would be like an official in- endorsement of it, I guess. Uh, yeah. Because there are definitely players out there that will not do anything unless they're, quote unquote, honoring the wishes of the designers. Rules, of, the rules yeah. is written. Rules as written. People. Yeah. Even though the rules is written, say, do whatever you want. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, have fun with it. Yeah, Explore with it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if you had an official... That, that, I mean, to me, that just that translates to more monsters, more variety, mm-hmm. more miniatures. Because correct me if I'm How... wrong, Talisman, uh, the only miniatures you actually have are the, the heroes. They're like wizards <sighs> or something roaming around, or mages. They're roaming around, uh, and everything else is like cardboard, I think. Um, Are you asking the wrong guy? <laughs> we need to get Seek in here. Get in out. here. Where's he at? We need him. Yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah, man. He and I have sparred on some stuff in the in the Discord. I, I really wish we could get him on the show. Like, at that fire, I like it. Yeah, but... I, I'm i looking at pictures of Talisman, and I don't see miniatures, so I'm assuming what you said is true. Yeah, because a lot of games before HeroQuest had, you know, Fantasy Dungeon and miniatures like sculpted miniatures for the for the the protagonist mm-hmm. pawns but not necessarily for monsters not and certainly not for furniture until hero quest sure and a lot of games still do that too where yeah you got like the but it's the, expensive. like uh oh um, what am i thinking of is it jaws of the lion gloomhaven oh yeah gloomhaven yeah but you, it, you'd have like a uh miniature for your main character but all the monsters are all standees or warhammer kind of quest thing. Um, well, yeah. not the big box, but I mean, I'm talking about like the Barnes and Noble or the Space Marine Adventures. Yeah, it's like yeah. The, your main yep. characters have plastic, but everything else is cardboard, encouraging you to expand and, you know, buff out your mm-hmm. set if you, if you want to. Buy more stuff. <laughs> Buy more stuff, yeah. So so there's there's one possibility. Maybe HeroQuest First Light is a completely new type of product that we haven't seen before, tying in with something they said. Of course... When they say this kind of stuff, are they like really fishing for ideas, or is it more like they've already we've decided, already decided? To, yeah, they've yes. already decided, and I, this is just a way to kind of like sell it. I think that is more likely. I think they've the already idea. decided. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe it has something to do with that. Maybe not. I mean, we know Renegade I mean, Studios it, is doing a bunch of stuff. Yeah, for, it could literally just be a real. you know the name of some whole new storyline. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Who knows? And it has nothing to do with paladins or, or talisman yeah. or anything. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Now, the, we had this whole big uh, spiritual journey with uh, Ann Carmen at, at Gen Con talking about um, how they basically shy away from explicit religious references in HeroQuest lore. Yes. I and, remember that conversation. And, and I've, I've seen other people on the internet like complain that that's a trend generally. Even though most of these games have had that stuff for, you know, decades. It's like, of course, oh, yeah. there's deities, faiths, you know, creeds, uh, religious beliefs, you know, 
and maybe it's like 100 percent fantasy or maybe it like kind of reminds you of something from the real world you know but i mean i open up my D D book and it's like yeah they've got the norse gods in there if you want to use oh them. yeah i mean they're there i mean uh, going all the way back to lord of the rings i mean lord of the rings is the same way where they're well lord of the rings didn't explicitly the books didn't explicitly talk about deities and stuff but when you get into like the silmarillion and stuff oh like yeah that, you get it's 100 percent to the yeah it J.R.R. Tolkien, Gods and yeah, angels and he was, stuff. A, he was yeah. a devout, devout Catholic. He had like so his Christian beliefs, and then he also had like European, uh, I guess, folklore. yeah, pagan mythology and all that stuff. And he yeah. created his own, but it was like it's it was obvious that like different things were like he grabbed one influence from here and there and everywhere. Right. But yeah. It's like that, that's the that background to Lord of the Rings. Continued throughout fantasy, the fantasy genre for as long as I can remember, mm-hmm. uh, where there's always gods or deities or you know spiritual yeah. powers that you're trying right. to get favor from. Where do where do the where do the superpowers that your guy has come from? Are do they come from like chemicals or like plants? Is it the natural world? Is it like psychic, you know, powers? Is it like occult, you know, hidden? Does everybody have this and they just yeah. have to train it? He's a he's something. You know, it's like superheroes. It's like, oh, he's an alien. Uh, he was hit by radiation. Uh, he's got cybernetics in his body. It's like, okay, does this power? Uh, oh, he's come got from a blessing a... from uh, this this yeah. goddess. Yeah, that he prays to a deity, uh, a demon, uh, what you know, something. So it's like, okay those those are creative origin stories for your powers or whatever but it also fleshes out the world because you think well i was just looking at the back back of the box of the game system the new game system for hero quest the 2022 edition and it says uh deep within the earth i'm like wait a minute the earth <laughs> it's on earth guys <laughs> it's canon <laughs> and i think of the old commercials where they say deep inside another dimension it's like yeah that's just fluff to sell the product but there's yeah. so little official lore explaining what it is. It's like, is this similar to how Tolkien tells the story of like Middle Earth? And it's like, is Middle Earth Earth? Or is it an yeah. alternate Earth? Is it like under the Earth? Is it, a, you know, another plane of existence? Well, what what is it? Right. It's, it, and it's all purposely vague. So you fill in the details with exactly. your brain. Your imagination takes over. So. What I got from N. Carmine's interview was not that, oh man, you know, you, you, you the only people who can enjoy Hero Quest. I got a are... quick question about that interview, real quick. Yeah, yeah, go Just ahead. To interrupt, go, real go quick. Yeah, yeah. Did you interview him in full Burnout Thor costume? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wore I that. To know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yep. And I and I'm gonna do the same uh, thing again. I'm gonna try okay. to get some some better t-shirts printed out, but it's no, gonna be not, pretty much the same. Not me, man. You're gonna get Ribby Raw. Ribby Raw. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So that's, that's funny. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I know that there's a lot of baggage in this topic, so I don't want to like you know dredge up any bad feelings anybody's got about this sort of thing but the point that i got from in you know he's super diplomatic it's like okay they're trying to sell a product to like a wide variety of people they know that there's people with strong beliefs uh that yes. don't want those stepped on and there's other people who don't don't believe that stuff or maybe are averse to it it's like they're 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 just keeping it vague enough that you can add whatever stuff you want or just leave it out or reinterpret it so i think if they did go with like a cleric or paladin or priest or whatever similar to the monk it's like this is going to be a very fantasy interpretation of it and it's going to be very vague so that yeah you can just read as much or as little into it as you want and and that's not because it's not there it's just because they left the gap for you to fill it in and i think that's something a lot of fans maybe don't seem to grasp is that they want you to fill in those details it's not that they're bad writers or they lack imagination it's it's almost like they're afraid to just tell you the answer because if they do then it's like now they've they've taken the mystery away you know they've they've sure. now you're gonna have to take out the red pen and cross out their lore and write your own in whereas they just want to leave it like oh and whatever happens next is up to you <laughs> you know the blank page <laughs> This is your, you know, thing. Yeah, but, some people. Well, yeah. it depends yeah. on the type of gamer. Some people really like that. I love it. I love the fact that it's like it's open ended because yeah. because I do that constantly in my group. Nice. Uh, 
we're all you know especially now with like the uh like the ranged orcs and skeletons and stuff official uh yep. from from the ogres pack uh I, I i sub those in all the time and obviously i have my own uh evil right. wizard deck and stuff like that i love it but there's so lots great. of people out there that hate that sort of uh open-endedness where you kind of just do what you want and they just want to go strictly by that book i, I don't know yeah i i mean i i i can sort of see like with a lot of this stuff like i like to see these the old drafts for these games because i want to know what was going through the heads of these writers like what were the discarded ideas not because i feel like i have to abide by that but just because it's close to the original inspiration just like yeah i always i always compare it to star wars like i want to know what george lucas was writing back then not because I think he's always right, because I think he makes a lot of mistakes. All um, big time. Yeah, but it's just like I, I I find that more interesting than just like yeah, what some fanfic you know twenty, thirty, forty years later was. You know, I'll I'll look first to the to the source, and then after that, then I'll look to other stuff. I I guess with to, correct me if I'm wrong, because I mean I with our hero quest sessions, I'm always Zargon, almost always. Mm. I don't get to see the other side of it as much. I get the impression that when you're talking about filling in gaps with these games, it's like it's all on the GM. Like the GM does everything. He has to build the yes. entire world by himself. Okay. And with the, the the player characters, it's like, oh well I can fill in the backstory of my character and that's it. Like everything else yeah. is just like I can't say, Yeah, well what if there's another island over there we could visit? Uh nope, sorry. <laughs> I mean that kind of makes sense, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know about this collaborative storytelling thing that you know somebody like Teo Sabadia would would put out. Playing with you on Saturdays when mm -hmm. I can, and um, with my regular group, uh, are the only times I've ever played as a hero. And only as a hero, I've only played like two or three quests, um, where my other buddy like took over as as the DM. Cool. And uh, it, it's definitely a different experience um mm -hmm. but but he he is much more my friend i'm referring to is much more a by the book kind of guy yeah so it was, it was interesting to see the way he was treating it versus the way i would have treated the same quest because i i'm fully familiar with all of those opening quests yeah i know everything's at and <laughs> what to do and where to go um but to, just to see to see him trying to work out how to play sargon and uh, how closely he was sticking to the book versus, you know, what I would have done. Uh, it's it's an interesting uh, I, contrast. Yeah, yeah, and I and I, I I like to see that, and I wish I could see more of it. Um, seeing more people go through that. I'll give you process. a great example. Yeah. I'll give you a great example. We were on the um, uh, second one, which is spoilers. the rescue of Thragnar. <laughs> spoilers, yeah. uh, thirty-five-year-old spoilers. Dang. Man. Um, I know, too soon, bro. Too soon. Um, but he he's reading through the quest notes and stuff, and then he's fishing out um, monsters, and he grabs the uh, the chaos sorcerer for Sir Ragnar. Now I have the mythic tier, mm -hmm. so he's grabbing this chaos sorcerer, and I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on. Why don't you go back in there? There's a hand hand me the uh, I have the 3D printed stuff, you know the organizers hand me hand me the heroes i'm going to show you something he's like no 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 it says do this like i know what it says hand me the hero the tray or whatever no 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 it says do this i'm like no 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 i i get it and i you know and i had to bust out the uh, sir ragnar mini cuz that's just something that a newer zargon wouldn't know to even look for yeah especially cuz he didn't have the you know he's not familiar with the mythic stuff the way you and i are but it was just funny, like how by the book he was trying to be, <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to show you something cool. Yeah. Well, Look, there's a special miniature for this. There you go. Yeah. Well, the, the the companion app says that it says like, oh, you can use the uh, dread yeah. sorcerer, or if you have, you know, Sir Ragnar, here he is. Yeah. If you have some other, you know, it's, it's a luxury miniature or something. It, it's a luxury item though. It's like they gave us a miniature for a character that's used once in a portion of one quest. I mean. Right. Officially, that nothing yeah. stops you from writing your own adventures and using him all day and using long. Using whatever you want, right? Yeah, yeah, for anything. Yeah, because any any character can represent any other character, and I think that was something that really struck me about the original Hero Quest was just the fact that yeah, 
this guy looks like Skeletor doing it like a, you know, right. A referee pose <laughs> for, you know, touchdown, but it's like, no, this is, this is actually the he's, good guy uh, that you're trying to say. He's ch- charging up for a spirit bomb. Yep, exactly. He's looking for a hug. <laughs> so, so looking down here, um, yeah, it, it's interesting to see them go through that process though, for sure. Yeah. Different, different Zargons, different, yeah. uh, interpretations some people were saying well because it doesn't say quest the words quest pack that first light must be something completely different that it's like a totally different type of product but i mean look at this it just says hero quest yeah i mean that doesn't mean anything because that name might change that could just be some placeholder do you think to to get in their system for now uh who knows do you think hero quest first light is a placeholder um it's very possible sure I mean, anything's possible. I I strongly disagree. Weren't we having the same conversation about um, <laughs> Ogre Horde? Yeah. Because it, yeah. originally like it, it was named against, something else. Against the Ogre Horde. But then we had one website, one pre-order site. It said Ogre said Horde. The Ogre Horde, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, it turned but out this is, this is true. Hasbro, it turned out sure. to be true, yeah. In the Spanish edition, it's just the Ogre Horde. There's no against Right. Until you start reading. Right. I mean, look, check out Cristobal's video, LaGuardia de Morcar. Like, when he starts, I mean, you, you turn the page and it says against the Ogre Horde. And he's like, what? <laughs> I, I, it, it, yeah. It'll be some variation of that, but mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think that will be the exact name. Hmm. Okay. But who knows? It could be. Okay. All right. We'll see. Yeah. I'll gladly accept defeat if I'm wrong on that. All right. And and I will never – I'll say that somehow I was right all along. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll definitely – yeah, I, I have to uh, swallow my words all the time. Okay. So going through here, Jungles of Deltarac, we got lots of references to it. Why multiple references? Don't know. Why different, I, why different numbers? Are these just maybe regional copies or I don't know. I don't I, I don't know how to read this other than yeah you've got a title you've got a number and you've got a a brand Avalon Hill Hero Quest Ogre Horde Quest Pack yeah it doesn't say against the Ogre Horde Hero Quest uh, Spirit Queen's Torment Quest Pack Jungles of Deltrack Hero Quest Jungles of Deltrack Ogre Horde Quest Pack a couple of times. I, I'm probably doing the exact same thing that uh, that AshQuest did in, in his Malgam Ash. Okay, Path of the Wandering Monk. So here we go. With the other hero collections, you got Hero Collection 1, Commander of the Guardian Knights, right? And you've got the Rogue Heir of Elethorn, Hero Collection 2, or just Hero Collection. Then you've got Path of the Wandering Monk. What? <laughs> So there's like a little story lore thing in the title. It's not just the description of what his job is. But if we go, I, several people were speculating that, yeah, First Light might be a hero collection. But why awesome. no mention of the character's name? Like <laughs> a First Light? <laughs> what, what's a First Light? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But but it, I feel like there's no pattern, only chaos in this. So they're making it up as they go along. It's every time they release something, I feel like the tendency of us as fans, and it, it makes a hundred percent logical sense that we're going to assume, well, this is a precedent. This is a pattern. And the next one will follow that pattern, but it almost never does. Like some things get repeated. Some things don't, some things change, some things stay the same. <laughs> you know, we go back and forth. You know, I thought they were on a certain trajectory for a little while and they changed it up. So sure. first light, might be a hero collection for something totally different. It might be more than one character. It might be a bigger box. I'm I, hoping it's not another hero. I, I feel like the heroes are getting bloated. Well, they've been putting they've been putting heroes inside uh, the bigger boxes. But again, where's the pattern? I mean, the Guardian Knight, was yeah, one character. Right. The Druid was a different design and two characters. <laughs> you know. It's like okay. I just feel like you get too many characters, and it just gets hard to, hard, well, to, hard to, I don't know, balance it. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, they're just giving. I feel like they're just giving you choices. But yeah, do you yeah. Feel like it's decision paralysis. Like, oh, I've got 15 heroes. Uh, how do right. I pick? It's gonna. I'm gonna have to sit here for an hour while you pick your character. Well, Even and, and I'm thinking of it. Say, no, you've got, you've got yeah. eight, eight heroes. 
pick four. You choose from these four original, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would never do that. But <laughs> I, I'm thinking in terms of long long term because I'm I, I've got other games like, and I mentioned this game a lot, which is Descent, and that game also has tons of heroes that you can you can buy separate mm -hmm. hero packs and quest packs and stuff like Option. that and it's all out of it's all out of print now oh. and it's all super expensive now and oh. so i'm thinking of this the future of hero quest and They're when it's out of print building eventually. it for collectors not for <laughs> yeah <laughs> and now and now all you've got all this content so you don't even want to get into it because there's so much and it's all so expensive and out of print that you don't even want to start touching it yikes yeah well i feel like that's where unfortunately with them having fired their two main guys that communicate yes. the stuff to the if, if 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 i were in charge of it right now i mean there's a million things i do but one of them would be just to continuously educate the public i mean think of games workshop they do this hardcore like what does game shop games workshop do they're like, here's a painting guide. Here's a free miniature. Here, get started. Here's like a million different variations of a starter pack. Like, we'll do anything possible to like encourage you to like get into this hobby and not think that it's so expensive that you can't possibly get into it. Because that's what I thought about Warhammer. Is like, oh, I mm -hmm. got to spend like, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, hundred dollars, oh, and I got to buy I did. and I got to become a master <laughs> painter, and I got to spend all my free time painting these these miniatures, and then if I'm lucky, maybe I'll get to play against somebody who will totally destroy me because I don't, you know, I haven't balanced my army properly, and so it's like scary. It's like, oh man, this this is too intense. I don't know if I right, want to do right. this. So you don't even want to get into it. Yeah, you just you stay away. So, it's so too, hero it's quest. Too, uh... Yeah, it's it's daunting. Yes. Whereas Hero Quest is is yeah fast going to be approaching that same spot. So what do you do? En encourage people. Hey, guess what? This is the simple. This is the simple fantasy game. This is the one where yes, you can just play what's in the box, and it's very easy. You could be a ten year old and figure it out. But guess what? It's limitlessly expandable, and it's easy right. to expand. So if you're the type of person who just wants to open up the box and play it you don't want to spend hours and hours like prepping you've got that but if you want to make it into a really complicated rpg you can easily do that it's all sure. here for you it's affordable you know and these expansions are not necessary you can do all this by yourself you don't need any of the expansions but guess what if you do have the expansions it's a nice like stimulant to your imagination because mm -hmm. you've got these new characters that you can use for anything you want you know, these new quests that give you a lot of ideas, you know, to, there's blank maps, maps that they give you, you know, just so many different things. So if they promoted it that way, they could come out with like little videos saying like, oh, if you wanted to paint it, here's one way to do that really easily. Or if you want to make a quest, here's a couple samples, you know, some ideas, you know, or here's some house rules that some people like to use. What do you think of this? You know, just instilling in people that idea that yeah it's not a big scary thing where you have to collect everything like i've heard of people yeah. with talisman i think this is one of seek's stories was like okay you bought all 15 you know thousand expansions and put them all together and it's like that's a kind of a fun thing to do because if you have them all why not but if you're the type of person that thinks well i can't play the game until i have that like the game is incomplete unless i have all that stuff then it's going to hold you back because who wants to invest that much? Like you say, it's like, oh, I got to buy all 20 heroes before I can play Hero Quest. No, you just, you get the four. And if you want to add extra, yeah, if you can find some of them, sure, toss them in. I, I think we've, we've said it a million times. They walk the tightrope, um, Avalon Hill does, of wanting to like preserve the legacy of Hero Quest, leave it open-ended, not tell you what to do. But then also appease the mentality of people who want to see no, you know, new content. So they'll give you the new hero, but they won't tell you how to use them, or even if you <laughs> have to use them at all. You know, it's, it's just there. Sure. So if they give us an expansion that's just a hero, I don't find anything wrong with that. But yeah, at a certain point, you're like, well, how much is too much? Right. Um, how many heroes do you need? Or how many expansions do you need? I mean, it's 14 expansions, I mean, well, too much. Uh, sure. you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, right. But, and we're, we're eventually, like I said, eventually it will go out of print. It just has yeah. to. It, it can't go yeah. forever. And anyone that wants to get into it is going to be so so overwhelmed oh, by yeah, how much yeah. is out there. Like, what which do I get? Do I get that Orgo Horde one, or do I get that Mage of the yeah. Mirror one, or that Inner uh, First Light one? Which do, what, what yeah. do I get? Frozen Horde looks, um, looks like they're, they're a lot all of stuff so expensive in there. now. Oh, man, it's <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, two hundred dollars on eBay to get uh, First Light now. Can you know, get... I, I just I hate to think about that in the future when yeah. I'm like sixty. Well, and I think about <laughs> and... the fact that it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, yeah. When, when did when did uh, Monopoly come out? Like in the 30s, <laughs> and you could still buy it. Yeah, but, that's that's ridiculous. But realizing that okay, Hero Quest is kind of like on the higher end of game. I'm thinking about oh, yeah. very few games, maybe HeroScape, but very few games are that cheap and give you that much plastic in one box. I mean, every time I flip over a a, a new game at one of these uh, friendly local game shops, I'm always like there's that moment of disappointment, like, oh, there's not as, as much as Hero Quest. You know, you don't have to get but over you, it. You, you <laughs> still pick up a copy of Monopoly for like 15 bucks. Yeah. It's, it's crazy how cheap And I mean, is. Monopoly, yeah, it's it's gone into that mass production. It's a staple. Lots of people yep. claim they hate the game and lots of people don't play it according to the rules and they, like, they complain about it. And yet it's like, that's a game everybody has. It's like, you got your deck of cards, you got your <laughs> chessboard, you got your checkers and you got your monopoly. Like everybody has it, but I mean, it's got metal miniatures. You know, it's got uh, sculpted plastic miniatures. It's got mm-hmm. cards, a board. It's got dice. Sometimes even custom dice. Yeah, custom. Yeah, money. Yeah, it's and there's tr- a trillion versions of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like oh, you want Lord of the Rings monopoly? There you go. But you want, uh, Super Mario Brothers. There you go. <laughs> but the thing about it is, if you if you walk in media, shit. <laughs> hey man, Rick, yeah, Monopoly. <laughs> so the thing is, though, you go into a store. How many versions of Monopoly do you actually see on the shelf? What three? Not very many. Unless unless you're in a uh, like a game store, you might you might see some <laughs> different the, variations. The Monopoly store. There's usually like okay, there's basic Monopoly. There's some type of like TV show. It's like well, here's. There's, there's some type of friends g- monopoly. There's some type of gimmick one. So it'd be like cheaters edition or like yeah, kids yeah. edition or giant, you know, playground edition. And then the themed one, there's usually only one of those. Like yeah, Harry Potter Opoly or um, mm-hmm. Ghostbusters Opoly or whatever. I- except the only time I think I've I've seen more than that, yeah, maybe a game shop or like a Christmas time, they'll have like a little kiosk in the mall, at least where I am at. And it'll be like calendars on one side and board games on the other. And they'll have like 15 different versions of Monopoly. But once those are gone, they're gone. Like you don't see them again. Mm-hmm. So right, right, they right. cycle Unless those you go online. Yeah, exactly. And then people collect them. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, so with HeroQuest, it's just HeroQuest. If they start making variations of it, those will cycle in and out and it's like a collector thing like i've heard a lot of people don't even play these variants they just collect them and so sure. they don't care what opoly it is it's like it's the new opoly they'll just buy it so if they start incorporating stuff like talisman or D mm-hmm. or magic or whatever into hero quest like making monsters from those universes part of hero quest as long as it's always branded hero quest and not some hybrid brand I, I will probably continue to buy it and uh, incorporate it into my like it's the games. it's the it's the uh, the, the the light loom <laughs> brand which is a, com- a combination of hero quest and talisman no thank you no <laughs> like i don't know i just yeah. call it something completely yeah. different a hybrid right i, I yeah that, that I, i'm not down with but i i could see like a one off kind of thing being kind of interesting i mean i think we talked about this before of like well what if there was a and d hero quest edition or you know warhammer hero quest or you know it was just like a, a one-off thing it would suck because it'd be a limited release it'd be here and gone but and that's another one of those yeah. things that you know years down the road oh, well. becomes this collector thing yeah whether that, it was good or not hyper expensive exactly yeah, yeah. so it's cool that it's it like the dead dice. yeah it's cool that it exists well those are those are um supposed to be a mainstream retail release they are they are i got a copy of them but but they had a they had a rough start they had a rough start and a lot of people did think they were going to be exclusive right felt felt like it for a little while 
yeah so the whole fomo thing i hate that i I, as much as possible i think maybe they should keep their ambitions (laughs) a little bit low i mean i'm not saying i want it's like ah kurgan wants you know expansions to stop it's like no not necessarily but what's wrong with them just continuing to produce what they've got continuing to promote it continuing to sell it you know as opposed to just oh well the last expansion came out now we just stop everything i mean that's how the original hero quest went it was like 1992 you had barbarian and elf packs i guess the following year you had brazil got their hero quest that's gonna be our next topic and then done you know they just sold off the stock they had and that was it i mean they destroyed some of their extra stock it was like hero quest was gone and it supposedly is because it was expensive to make you know it was successful but it was just expensive so yeah maybe maybe them winding down is an inevitable thing i know people say well it's not the same as it was in the 90s because you've got online stores but still i mean an online store it's like they're going to be selling nothing but hero quest it's like okay we've got you know all 25 expansions <laughs> That's all we sell. I mean, I guess a place like Amazon can sell stuff, you know, these aggregate uh, marketplaces, eBay. But you got the Warhammer store at the mall, and then you got the HeroQuest store right next door. <laughs> Come on in. We'll show you how you can use, uh, you know, these, these two specs to make your own Sir Ragnar. <laughs> so we got Path of the Wandering Monk, Spirit Queen's Torment, Prophecy of Telor. I mean, who's gone through this entire thing? Well, there's Talisman Core. I don't know. I just feel like this was not a document that they necessarily wanted it, everyone to, like, pick through. So I would believe pretty much anything that's in here. Yeah. I mean, anything, plans can change. That's also true. It's very true that, you know, projects get announced. Uh, products even come out and then, you know, stop for whatever reason. Companies make mistakes. I mean, just because a company does makes a decision doesn't mean it's always the right one. Even if they're as big and powerful as Hasbro, you know, we've we've seen it. At the same time, it's like this is probably pretty much what you see is what you get. Okay, here's the other thing I wanted to look at: Hero Quest Knight Limited Run character. Just interesting to see that. Uh, in reference to the original yeah that in yeah. it's listed in their catalog as that so um let's see hero quest again it's just looking at white and gray I wonder the different uh it's like the same number same number most yeah of the time. yeah why is it wonder play, what's up there. maybe it's a uh, different version uh different um Localizations for different Two, three, regions. Four, five. Could be, something. yeah, because there's five languages that that they put it into. Yeah, that's so. That's going to be the next topic. So, I've lately been on a kick about. Well, I guess this kind of goes back to the beginning. I I remember getting mad when I thought that Hero Quest wasn't coming out in the UK, like the HasLab campaign, because I'm like, come on, that's where it started. Like, it seems so wrong not to. And then they're like, oh no, yes. Uh, you can get it through Zatu games or whatever. So Zatu, there was like a bunch of distributors. There was like the distributor for New Zealand, for Australia, for the UK, and I'm already forgetting their names. But I mean, like they have all these all these places where it's shipped around the world. But I'm just thinking of the old Hero Quest. Like it was available in so many languages and countries. Maybe that was the mistake. Maybe they overextended themselves. You know, but for better or for worse, we have this legacy, this history of Hero Quest in different languages. So Brazil, so their version was in Portuguese, and it was put out by a company called Astrel. Uh, I think is what it was called. I'm I'm about to look at it, and I can see how great my memory is. But um, the the Brazilian version of Hero Quest was interesting because it came out in '93. And it didn't have plastic character miniatures. It instead had cardboard standees, which you can still find. 
So I think it was the last of the game systems that came out because the European ones, it was 89 was first edition, 90 was second edition, 90 was also the North American version. Um, and all three of those had different rules. And then the 91 Japanese edition had like different adventures as well. But the Brazilian version, 1993, was actually the same, supposedly, as the North American rules, which was interesting because the Japanese version was its own thing. But the European, uh, the UK version was kind of like all over, all across Europe, it was like the same stuff, just in a different language. So whether it was Spanish or German, Italian or whatever. Um, so I'm thinking like, well, this would be like the easiest thing to do because... I mean, you know, the Italians, the Spaniards, the, you know, the British, they were all like, oh, okay, well, we're getting different hero quest rules, but they still welcomed it with open arms. It's like, we're getting hero quest again, even it's, though it's not our hero quest. Well, it's our hero quest again. But the Brazilian fans, like, they'd just be getting the same thing. So we learned that there was a little bit of a wrinkle to it, unfortunately. Um, did you hear about this, about the uh, legal dispute between Hasbro and this other company? I did not. Okay. Well, uh, credit where credit is due. Let me get his name again because I'm going to forget and say it wrong. Uh, Dry Conan. Drykanan uh, shared a link to a page here, and it should be on the screen here momentarily. Okay, so we've got this website. This is taversoffice.com.br. I'm going to post a link in the chat here. And oh, yeah, I've not been following the chat. Sorry, guys. Bohemius is here. Welcome. Yeah, high mage of the first light. Who knows, right? Strange bus. Hey, from Nebraska. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Of course. <laughs> Play-Doh Hero Quest, legit. Oh man, great comments, guys. Yeah, there's so much speculation about first light. We could get back into that after we talk about this here. But um, yeah, I just wanted to cover this. So this article looks like it was translated. So it's a little bit iffy but it says a fight between Estrella that's the name of the company Estrella and Hasbro predicts the destruction of Banco Immobiliario and other toys so the two companies have been partners since the 1970s when Hasbro settled an agreement with Estrella for the Brazilian company to launch its products in Brazil with adaptations to the local market thus the game of life became Jogo da Vida Simon became genius. G.I. Joe was renamed first Falcon and then Commandos M. Chow. Okay, I'm sorry for butchering the language. Same happened with that for several other adapted products. In 2007, Estrella reportedly stopped, reportedly stopped paying royalties to Hasbro. The American, I like the way they do that, in turn decided to set foot in Brazil at the same time and brought in a commercial representation. Today, Hasbro faces an unusual situation, competing with itself in the country. Its monopoly, created in 1935, for example, disputes space with Banco uh, Immobiliario, launched by Estrella in Brazil in 1944. Brands that, according to the court, belong to Hasbro, while Estrella claims to be hers because they were adapted and present differences in relation to the original product. Sought, the companies declined to comment. Estrella only stated through its press office that it will appeal. However, according to people heard by the report, there is an interpretation that she would need to comply with the sentence, even if she decides to take the case to higher courts. Under the agreement signed with Hasbro, Estrella should register the brands it created for the products with the BPTO, Brazilian Patent Office, and at the end of the contract, transfer the rights to the partner. The last contract signed between them is for 2003, being extended based on amendments. In 2007, Estrella would have stopped paying royalties for the use of the brands, but continued to produce and sell the products. In the Court of Justice of San Paulo ruling, Hasbro's defense says that Estrella was in bad faith since the company would have transferred the brands to Brinkemold 
of which it is the main shareholder, would be a way to defraud the performance of the contract and prevent Hasbro from receiving royalties. Estrella, in turn, defends that it owns the brands it developed, that the contract was unilaterally terminated by Hasbro. In Court of Justice of San Paolo's decision to collect and destroy the toys is in fact extended to retailers. It will take the sector by surprise as it prepares for two of the best-selling moments, Black Friday on the 26th and Christmas. And now the Pinkertons. Yeah. Get those toys. Yeah. So this is not, this is very discouraging sounding news that if there is some type of ongoing litigation between these two companies, since Estrella was the distributor or publisher of Hero Quest in Brazil, maybe that's the reason why we haven't heard word one about Hero Quest Brazil. Maybe it's nothing to do with how much money it could be made or how many fans there are in that country. Maybe they can't even talk about it. So if that's the case, I mean, that's a big, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like I will very often just post my opinion and people like try to shoot me down and say, you know, you idiot, don't you know this, that, and the thing. It's like, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't work in the industry. I don't follow these legal cases. How do I know this stuff is happening? So rather than like, you know, savage me for it, just show me why I'm wrong. Tell me, you know, the facts on the ground. Because I bet you I'm not alone here. I bet you most people have no idea about this stuff. So all we see is a company seems to be just ignoring like what would be a very profitable venture and giving people what they want, you know? <laughs> so if I have to be the one to embarrass yep. myself by, you know, asking a question, fine, I'll do it. Because I'd rather people know this stuff. So anyway, that's that. Um, this may not be the final word on it. And certainly I'm not a legal expert and there could be some translation issues with this as well, but there it is. Uh, let's look at HeroQuest Brazil. So this is credit to Hispazargon. So I always like to give credit to people. And I actually got one of my videos flagged on YouTube because I linked to DeviantArt. And apparently that's not a good thing to do. So if anybody wants to link to DeviantArt, do not do it. Because YouTube now cares about um, not safe for work stuff. <laughs> and apparently if there's anything on that site that might not be for you know immature viewers um they don't want it linked so even if it's behind a paywall so don't do it but anyway uh nothing no problems with his bizarre gun stuff he's a good guy he always keeps it above board keeps it interesting so here we've got hero quest brazilian edition official rules and this is yield in of course so 1993, Estrella SA Company released with Milton Bradley and Hasbro licensed the classic edition of HeroQuest, the Brazilian one. And you can go ahead and read his post. It's really great. Um, he brings together a lot of images of this version of HeroQuest that people may not have seen. Notice how it's the uh, Les Edwards art. So you can link to Les Edwards. I mean, he's got some spicy stuff on his page too, but I guess it's considered fine art so it's okay um sorry i don't want to hang up on that but it looks like uh, the art is modified slightly like it's not one-to-one -one the same artwork as almost kind of redrawn slightly yeah like a little more stylized but notice the uh the compass logo they've got there that estrella logo two to five players um his bizarre one was mentioning there's I don't see Games Workshop on here, which is kind of interesting. And I mean, you're immediately going to think, okay, the reason why is because they don't have the plastic miniatures that Games Workshop designed, you know, the Citadel characters. And yet there's all this other Warhammer-esque stuff in it. So say, if you got Famir's in there, if you got Chaos in there, yeah. you're, you're Warhammer still. Yeah. Notice there's no Famir's on the box cover out of all the characters got your chaos warrior you've got orcs you've got the chaos warlock mummy zombie dwarf barbarian elf wizard you've got i personally think he looks like frankenstein's monster in between the two zombies but yeah okay other stuff so 
Uh, another thing here. Well, the original didn't have a Femira either. Nope. Nope. But it's just kind of one of those things. Oh. It's like, why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Were they debating whether to add the character in or not? Or maybe he just ran out of room. Um, okay, so this is the this is the uh, Brazilian version. This is from the rule book. So kind of interesting because you've got the. Well, let's go to the back to the beginning. So there it is. You know, very familiar. Got the Estrella logo manual. I always liked how they had this uh, like security envelope thing. It's like, don't look in this. This is this is secret stuff. This is like, yeah, you know, so you can't see through it. Um, even though both the heroes and Zargon are supposed, or Morka are supposed to read this, but um, I don't speak Portuguese, so I can't tell you how close this is. But apparently, it's very, very similar. I mean, it looks very similar to the North American version that I'm used to. The version that, of course, the remake is based on directly. Uh, but look, there we've got the miniature is it's just the door base so several more plastic door bases were included but you insert the cardboard figure into it to make the hero and actually those there's scans of those images too and they make uh, kind of a handy painting guide if you want to uh, come up with ideas for how to paint the characters to look like they would have according to the imaginations of the original designers but yeah the um, the armory Instead of it being a separate board, it's just in the in here. And so instead of paintings of these different items, you have drawings or sketches. You've got your toolkit, you got your long sword, battle axe. I mean it's kind of cool. A lot of people just don't have the talent or the time necessarily to write create their own new Hero Quest uh, artwork that kind of looks like it fits. So I mean They'll grab it from any source, you know, Gary Chalk drawings or or whatever. And here's here's another place you could you could grab stuff if you wanted. But yeah, no mention of Games Workshop. Very interesting. Very interesting. And so other stuff, and again, credit to his Bazargan for gathering these. These are scans, you know, other people put them together. But yeah, there's the Game Master screen. I always called it the Zargon screen. That's supposedly Mentor. Uh, let's see. Quest book. Like, why is he Why is he over the top of all those monsters? Yeah, because the... Like he's commanding them. The Zargon Come player on. is the one right behind it. So it's like, I figured this is your mask. This is your character that you're putting yeah. on. Your... Someone's, someone's pulling the wool over our eyes. It's like, know. no, no. <laughs> Watch out for these monsters <laughs> that, that you see before you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like when when I'm when I'm GMing a game, it's like if I give the heroes like tips uh, or something or hints, it's like, oh, that's mentor speaking. But when I'm like trying to kill them, that's Sargon. So, <laughs> because they're the same person, same guy. Yeah, Kaiser Soze is here. Yeah, it's Fight Club. <laughs> so yeah, look at this. Very familiar. I mean, this this kind of almost sepia, monochromatic presentation is very much like oh, yeah. North American, whereas the... Um, it's, it's close, but you can definitely tell it's different. Yeah, the European is is more like brown on white, but then you would have like a full color cover. It'd be oriented the other way. Landscape instead of portrait. Yep. Yep. Spoilers! But I mean, you know, very, very similar. See? It's just kind of what you expect. And then let's go to the end. Here, Famir, Zumbis, Warlock, Gargulas, Mumias. Yeah, my Portuguese uh, needs work. Okay, so 1993. So, yes, if you are a fan, I mean, you could easily do your own. Well, that went nowhere. You could do your own translation uh, pretty easily. You could just print this stuff out and use it with because that's what fans are doing now they're they'll buy whichever version is cheapest usually the english version and they'll just do their own fan translation yep uh fans in spain it's been widely reported that you know they uh the game system is well stocked but the expansions uh, once they sell out 
you just can't get them anymore. And so, yeah, you just do the translation yourself. And sometimes it's better than the official one. So the tiles are the same. Character sheets. Yeah, some of these links probably need to be fixed. But yeah, you had all these fan magazines, Drago Brazil. I think some people get those confused. They think those are like official, but no, they were just fans, fanzines from back in the day. But I mean, there were just tons of uh, published quests in magazines and so forth that you could get. I guess the equivalent to that now would be something like Sunday Quest you know, or Dungeons Quest, where it's like, yeah, somebody's selling a little booklet that has, you know, fan made stuff in it. Hopefully that they've gotten permission and not just stealing it. Quest book. Yeah, but it's all this, uh, all this kind of lore and stuff is really interesting. But anyway, so I tried to, you know, put my thoughts into action and actually sent email to uh, Hasbro asking, well, almost rhetorically, like when I say, well, why isn't the Brazilian version of HeroQuest out? I'm not just saying, well, tell me why. Well, it's because of this, you know, particular issue, but also like, why not? Like, I want you to do it. Please do it. <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, one guy they can ignore easily. Um, a lot of people keep pestering them with questions about it. Maybe they'll be prompted to issue a response, even if it's just, well, we can't say at this time due to ongoing cases or something, you know, it could be something like that. You, we've seen companies do that before. They say, well, we can't say because of ongoing litigation, because of licensing issues. Um, we have no plans at this time. At least they said something as opposed to just leaving us to guess, you know, the reason. But it might have to do with that uh, legal battle with Estrella. So any thoughts about that? Uh, that would be a no. All right, so as far as first light goes, Grumpy Gramps screen. Yes, Bohemius. <laughs> yeah, good stuff, guys. Um, so as far as first light, yeah, there was a couple of different thoughts. One was maybe first light is just thematically talking about the next thing. Like we've had the dread moon rising. So that's like the night. And the next day is the dawn, right? So the dawn of a new day. So it's just the next sequential quest adventure after Rise of the Dread Moon. Although if Jungles of Deltrak is coming out first, that kind of doesn't answer, well, what? where does that fit in? Like people are very hung up on the chronology, like what order you're su supposed to play them in, what story order. I mean, I don't think it matters at all, really. You've got your game system, you've got any expansion, play them in any order you want. But I understand also if you're doing a big, long, you know, multi-year campaign, sure, you want to know, well, do I play Keller's Keep first or do I play Return of the Witchlord first? You know, story-wise, how does it flow? And some are certainly difficult, more difficult than others. I mean, yes, Ke sure. Keller's Keep and Frozen Horror are not the same beast. No, not at all. Not at all. And so if knowing that, if I knew that Frozen Horror was like four times harder <laughs> in places more than that than Keller's Keep, I might modify Frozen Horror to make it a lot simpler, a lot easier. Or I might like wait to play it until after I'd played like a lot of other stuff. Or maybe I'd just go into it giving the heroes a lot of bonuses that's how i ended up zargon in it is giving the heroes a lot more opportunities to get magic and gold and stuff so that they could survive <laughs> because i basically started them off like from nothing with there i mean i literally had people who had never played hero quest before playing the frozen horror as their first adventure but i knew that i knew it was going to be difficult and so i made those extra provisions but I could have done it a million other ways. But yeah, so it looks like, it feels like they have a better handle on the difficulty now. They're not going crazy like in 1992 with those. But yeah, First Light, 
I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be coming out after Jungles of Delthrak. Would you say that's a fair assumption? Yes. But, I mean, if it's like a hero collection or some smaller package, then I guess it really doesn't matter. You know, Rogue Air Valathorn yeah. ties itself to Mage of the Mirror and Rise of the Dread Moon, but it doesn't really say, like, oh, you have to... I mean, you could use him, you wouldn't have to. It And Path of the Wandering Monk, I mean, it does sort of tie itself into against the Ogre Horde, but, I mean, yeah. I think it only matters oh. if... Yeah, go All ahead. good questions for Avalon Hill at Gen Con. Yes, for those interviews. Yep. Yeah. I, I would love it so much if Doug Hopkins is there. I can just picture he just, you see him and he just like completely bedraggled. He's like, listen, I, I, I can't, I can't answer any more questions. Like, just, just, just let me, <laughs> let me write these quests in peace. I'll get behind him on all fours. You push him over <laughs> and then we pin him down and he's got to answer everything or he's yeah. not leaving. Yep. It's like uh, security, no security here. <laughs> We're just kidding. Uh, Get these actually, people out. Yeah, actually, it was funny because at the last Gen Con um, last year, uh, Tess Hogan, writer of the quest for um, Rise of the Dread Moon, she actually had Doug Hopkins's name badge on. Like she didn't have her own name. She had Doug Hopkins's name. It's like you're not Doug Hopkins, are you? <laughs> not how I pictured him. Yeah. So. It would be really cool if he was there, but I mean, I put his name out there because he's the name attached to the things that we see, like in those designer blogs and the quests that have names on them that aren't Stephen Baker or Teo Sabati or Joe Manganiello are Doug Hopkins. And you see his name right from the beginning with the HasLab campaign, and it's like he's always describing these rules. I, I think I've been critical a couple of times of like how he explains things because sometimes what the card says is not what he intended. And it's like, whose fault was that? You know, is that the play testing? Is it us fans because we just don't understand things or, or what? But for better or for worse, it sounds like he either does a lot of that stuff himself or is like the leader of that kind of writing the director so he would be a super cool person to talk to i would love to interview him or hear somebody else interview him so yeah i hope he's there oops <laughs> looks like uh youtube is updating stuff yes all good questions for gen con the other thing i was thinking uh first light yeah it, if it's a if it's a storyline it could be literally anything just like jungles of deltrek let me ask you again though has your view changed on Jungles of Delthrak in terms of what the story is about? Do you trust one word of what you've seen on those pre-order pages about rescuing dwarves from Keller's Keep, or do you think that's just some AI uh, crap that they threw on there? In the interest of full disclosure, I have not read a single one of them. Ah, oh, spoilers. Mm -hmm. Spoilered. Well, a lot of it is fluff it sounds like something that someone could have just made up you know oh a thrilling adventure blah 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 you know harness new magic and yeah. you know fight deadly monsters and a new adventure in the world of fear quests like yeah sure of course tell me something i don't know but what we got from those pre-order pages it was pixie games the ones who put up that infamous fake image that ai generated image but other sites have been putting up their own pre-orders and they've pretty much copied almost exactly what they have. And they're saying 16 quests. But in the description, they're saying, like, choose your path or they're implying that there's some kind of alternate way of playing the game, which makes me think of Against the Ogre Horde because we didn't know what that meant with Against the Ogre Horde. We just knew, okay, it's a new way to play. But the theory with Jungles of Delthrak is that they're going to give you those 16 quests, but maybe you only actually play 10 of them because maybe there's alternate paths to encourage replayability. I don't know if that's really what's going to happen, but that's that's one of the going theories. And it doesn't seem to sound like anything having to do with the unreleased Dwarf Quest pack. I mean, I even asked Luca Pachi about it. He's got the drafts. And 
it doesn't sound anything like it. But the fact that it's saying that there's dwarves, the storyline is there's dwarves from Keller's Keep that need to be rescued. And there seem to be dwarf figures in the box. I mean, we're not 100% sure if those are like heroes or are they NPCs? Are they mercenaries? Right. Makes people think, oh, this is the dwarf quest pack. But we've kind of gotten away from that, you know, name of hero quest pack. So I don't think that really tells us much other than, well, maybe it'll have thematically some story lore connection to dwarves, just like Rise of the Dreadmoon had connection to elves. You know, you were the land of the elves, you had elf characters. But it wasn't like the Elf Quest Pack Part Two, although you could view it that way. It was. It wasn't the Night Quest Pack either, even though it had a knight with it. Other than that, it seems to have nothing too surprising, except it does say that there's going to be uh, dice in the box, which is like, okay, that's not too surprising. We've seen dice before in several expansions now. Um, but translucent figures again. So what's that about? You know, what what kind of things in jungles are going to be translucent? Like, are we talk are these like swamp gas uh, monsters or something? <laughs> I mean, who knows, right? Could be anything. Possible. Yeah, but lots of possibilities. So I think we're just waiting for waiting for more reveals because we can't really guess. I mean, it's even hard to guess where, you know, what they're going to do with these legacy packs. So I did not see any mention of Wizards of Morkar in there, in that PDF file. That doesn't mean it's not coming out, but if it is coming out, maybe not till next year. Yeah. I can't imagine they will not do that at some point. Yeah, it seems like the next natural step. Because yep. they've done against the Ogre finish Lord. out they, all the original the impossible. content. Yeah, they've done the impossible, and we saw that a lot of the stuff they just felt free to just change it. Like they changed the storyline, they just wiped it out and created a new one. Um, but at the same time, with like a lot of the rules that people thought they were going to change, they didn't change them. You know. Uh, yeah. They, they swapped out some tokens for cards, which a lot of people assumed they would do. But then they gave us that arena mode that was never there originally. And it's like, okay, fine. Uh, that's kind of cool. That could apply anywhere. So I would imagine that it would probably be fair to say that they would take a similar path, a similar approach with a remake of Wizards of Morkar. Just fill in that gap with new stuff. You know, any yeah. ideas that they want. Not even necessarily having to do with that particular pack, but just hero quest in general. Like they've they've they felt free to do that in other places too. It's like, oh well, people still want the Guardian Knight. It was sold out. They couldn't get it. Here, let's just shove it in this pack. Now you've got it. Sure, why not? I don't have a problem with that. You have a, you have a version of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a pretty good version. Now, yeah. I think that. There is a little bit of speculative controversy, conspiracy, whatever, about Wizards of Morkar. Going back to the rumors that we were hearing from Cristobal, and he, of course he publicly apologized for the fact that the rumors about Against the Overhorde were completely false. None of them were true. They were all debunked. Um, I don't know if the other rumors he heard were from the same source, but they were saying, whoever they are, that Wizards of Morkar is going to be the final quest pack. The final new expansion. No way. I don't believe that. Okay. And the next rumor is that it will feature a Zargon miniature uh, because it will include a final battle with Zargon. No. Oh, crap. There, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way they are going to definitively like set an end to Hero Quest if they're making money on it. That's just not going to happen. Right. Yeah, and I'm and I'm with you. At the same time, though, if they knew it was the last one, or they thought it was the last one, uh, it's, again, though, I don't think they would know that in advance. But uh, you know, yeah, it's possible. Not. It's 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 like in the world of comic books. You know, you kill off a character, and it's such a good story. It's like people are like, and then, and you're like, 
Dang it. Okay, fine. He's alive again. Oh, wait, there's more. <laughs> He's alive again. Yes. So, yes, it's just like the, the Witch Lord. You killed him. Yes, we killed him. And he survived a spirit blade, and he's out there with his army. Dang it. Okay, so you go, you killed him again. Well, but you know what? Some of his guys got away with his magical books, and uh, it'd be a shame if those guys <laughs> took over the world again. It's like, okay, fine. So yes, even they could shock everybody by doing an adventure where it's like, yep, you killed Zargon. You stabbed him right through the heart, and he is dead. He's not. He's not getting up from that few seconds later oh he's he's alive and well and <laughs> planning his his attacks on the on the realm again so okay or replace him with somebody that's basically the same you know uh, but but the whole question is going to be like are they going to try to change the name to wizards of zargon are they going to try to explain that morikar is just his other name or is it a totally different evil wizard that's just like him is it a rival? Is it, you know, it's like, oh, you killed Zargon, but Morkar is alive. Oh, you killed him, but Grimdead is still out there. Dang it. There's so many, so many possibilities. But again, it's once we get into that territory that's unexplored, it's like anything is possible. We can't necessarily predict what they will do other than, yes, it would seem silly to deliberately paint themselves into a corner. Yeah. Not have a backup plan. Yeah, I, I can't see that happening. Because you do, you will have those people that it will be like, oh, well, this is the final one. Uh, you know, so sad. You know, I had to play this, and now it's over. Well, I guess I'll go and play HeroScape now and Talisman. It's like, no, wait. No, I don't, there's more Hero yeah. Quest. I, I just can't see that. No way. Unless, uh, well, and I was thinking with First Light. The other theory was, I mean, there's so many theories. Okay, rather than it being the next chapter, what if it's a flashback? What if it's the first light, you know, the beginning, the prequel? Maybe this is Rogar and his companion. Yeah, the first time I've they seen went that. To war, I've, you know? I've seen that theory like floated out there. That could be interesting. Yeah, and that would be that would be fine. Mm -hmm. Or what if this is again like Cristobal's possibly unreliable source of there was this other theory that they're going to release yet another repackaging of the game system, maybe with alternate quests, maybe with extra content similar to like, you know, advanced quest edition, you know, with the dark company, maybe first light is a way of just like representing the game system again, you know, they can stick with mostly the same content, but maybe just some extra, I don't know, hooks to get people, who already bought it to buy it again and then get beginners back into it. I don't know if I believe that theory. I mean, I, I see them doing something like that, but I don't necessarily see it being called HeroQuest for, uh, First Light. Like, yeah, I would be more inclined to either think it's, uh, yeah, an expansion with, yeah, a bigger box, a hero, or... Yeah, like a prequel adventure. I mean, the prequel adventure, what would it be? It could be an expansion, like a prequel expansion. Like, what's wrong with that? Like, people have been assuming thus far that it's like... Nothing. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'd be fine with that. Each each new expansion has to take place after the next one, right? So... Yes. Uh, Frozen Horror happens, then Mage of the Mirror happens, then uh, Rise of the Dreadmoon happens, then Against the Overheart happens, then the Jungles of Dalthrak, then First Light. But what if First Light takes place, yeah, before all those, you know, or even before the game system? Of course, if it did, you run into the, like, like the Star Wars problem. Like, okay, are you supposed to see episode one first and then you see A New Hope? And you're like, wait a minute, the technology is like all changed. All the CGI went away. Like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> would the quest be even easier than the game system quest, even simpler? Or would it be like you'd be fighting you know stuff that's harder than the trial or are you supposed to take the same heroes with you or are these new heroes but i mean that could be a, a thing they could give you four totally different heroes it's risky though because right like, people want new stuff and yet like okay but but don't make don't mess with it too much you know <laughs> at what point does it no longer feel like hero quest and feels like something else very subjective but I don't know. So many possibilities. 
So we've got several months to wait on that. Um, the other, the last thing that I was going to talk about here um, was the, again, to head off any rumors that I'm saying HeroQuest is dying or about to die or, <laughs> you know, days are numbered or anything like that. Like, I hope it just continues on. I hope that 30 years from now, you can still walk into any store and just buy HeroQuest for a reasonable, reasonable price. That's what I hope. Whether that really happens or not, who knows. But if, if it was up to me, that's what I would want. Uh, it to be um, this uh, companion app it was saying for the longest time you would go to Hasbro's app page and it said plain as day uh, this app will be supported or available through June 14th 2025 and it's like okay so what happens on June 15th they just take it away Seemed to be the case. I mean, they had a whole list of discontinued apps right underneath it. Uh, let's see, right here. But then, possibly because of our discussion, they changed it. They updated it. So now, it says, app available through December 30th, 2026. So as we know, the companion app is a way to play the official quests uh, without Zargon, so it's it's automated. And you might think, well, this has limited value because, I mean, so much fun of HeroQuest is playing as Zargon, is making your own quests, your own adventures. Um, but there are still plenty of people out there that say, oh, woe is me. I bought HeroQuest and I have no one to play with, just myself. Or, you know, well, I've got, I want to play with my kids, but, you know, I don't want to scare them too much, you know, <laughs> me playing Zargon, and I just want to be a hero with them and just play the adventure uh, together. That's uh, a crime. Yeah. So there's a lot of, like, excuses. I mean, I say, hey, guess what? It's, it's the internet age. It, you're already playing digitally on your phone, right? Guess what your phone can do? It can get on the internet. Guess what? It can go to Twitch. <laughs> it can go to Steam. Uh, or no, no, it can't. No, it can't. So people who want to play on Tabletop Simulator need a PC. But yes, people who However, want... friends, we've yes. got HQuest Master. Yes. Which is a fantastic solution. I really want to see more development in that. Yep. Cuz that's like my ultimate grail hero quest application where people can make quests and play test with them. the HQuest builder tool mm -hmm. and then publish them and play them on HQuest Master. That's now, awesome. Now, with HQuest Master, can you play multiplayer, though? Uh, fantastic question. I don't think so. That is the one downside, I would say. Well, yeah. on the other hand, I, sh I should maybe backtrack that. With the way the companion app works is maybe, for people who haven't used it, it is not like everybody gets their phone out and connects like a multiplayer game, like you're on a server. Right, right. Rather, Nobody has done that yet. Nobody has done it yet. No. Rather, it's a just a digital presentation of the quest unfolding, so the secrets are preserved. So if you don't want to know like what's behind the door until you actually sure. go in. But what you're supposed to do is one person has that phone or tablet in their hand, and their the physical board is also out with all the people sitting around the table. And you're just put, placing the pieces according to what the app tells you to do. And right. yes, there's no, some should... subjective guesswork, like, okay, how many dice do I actually roll and which card yeah. do I draw? But... So imagine you take H Quest Builder and you go that one step further where several players can join a game. And, you know, player A takes their turn, let's say. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't even have, all have to be logged in at the same time, necessarily. Uh, and then it's the next player's turn in the turn order, mm -hmm. they get a notification on their phone or whatever, and they can log in on their phone ah, like and take their next turn. Like playing by mail. And then the next, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually did that nice. years ago Man. in the mid-90s, yeah. I, I, um, I did not, but I knew people that did that. It's like, yeah, you could play by email, play by mail. Yeah, there was one where there's a war game I remember playing where you'd, like, you'd, you'd take your turn, and then you would save the file and send the file nice to the guy you, the person you were playing with they would open it and you know do the same thing Queen's anyway to... <laughs> <laughs> right exactly yeah. um Stand but something like that with hero quest where 
you know, it's not real time. It's not the same as sitting around with your friends and, and getting together. But it's a way and, to play. Uh, but it's a way to play, and you can get through the people. content, mm -hmm. and you can get through custom content. So the, the content is limitless. Yeah. And everybody app... can get together and play. Because the official app does not let you do that. There's no, you can't remix the quests. You can't right. modify them in right. any way. It's just always the same. Now, this is something you can do on, I don't know how familiar you are with this, but the website Board Game Arena. So you go to that website, and um, and I'm a subscriber there. But there's lots of promo uh, code games Ruby. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there's no promo code uh, but there's a ton of games there uh new games uh relatively recent games like um arc nova or heat i think or, I um, the site long ago and i was looking for hero quest didn't see it now no, yeah if you it. sign up and, and you can play without an uh a paid account but i have a paid account but uh oh, there's okay. also an app and you can set up a game let's say Catan. that's a classic Yep. You can um, set up a game, get people to join the game, and you can take your turn and then just you know close your phone, close the app, whatever. And then whenever the next person takes their turn, you know they, they, they get a notification that it's their turn, they take it, and so on and so forth, until it's your turn again. You get a push notification on your phone. Hey, it's time to take your turn. You, you log back in, you know, click the link or whatever. Okay, I can see the uh, the game board and what the other players have done, and now I can take my turn. And you can play it at your own pace. And uh, is it as great as sitting around with a, a, a group of friends? No, not even close. Like sitting around with a group of friends and having some drinks and, and playing a game, that's that's my that's my thing in life. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what I love Cheetos. more than anything. Yeah, where are the Cheetos? Mom do. Yeah, I have gray eyes. I have gray eyes. But it, it, barring that, this is it's such a great experience to be able to just play a game at, at whatever pace you want. And, you know, when somebody can log in and play their turn, they, they do it. And then the next person gets their notification that it's their turn. If you could do something like that for HeroQuest, where everybody just kind of takes their turn as they want, and maybe it takes you a, a month to play a quest. Who cares? At least you're playing. Yeah. Okay, I don't know 100% what I'm doing here on HQuest Master, but yeah, yeah, it, it's it's all relatively new. Yeah. Does this connect with HQuest Builder as well? Or are they just you can um lines? you can take what uh stuff from HQuest Builder and upload it to HQuest Master? Yes, and I think HQuest Master there's additional stuff you can add to your quest in it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because I, I still use Hero Scribe. I don't mess with this. I mean, I'm glad the stuff exists. I'm glad yes. people get value out of it. Yes. And it does sound right. like it's got a lot of potential for the future. So. That's the big thing. It's yep. You don't have to download any apps. You don't have to have any special software or anything well, like that. If you can get online, you can get this stuff. If you can get online, if you have a relatively new device, which most people do, you can you can make it work. Yep. You can you can take that file, you can upload it to HQuest Master, and somebody can play your quest, yeah. which is phenomenal. I love that. That's really cool. And and to me to me that just fosters so much community. Fans do the best stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. The, when you, when you you harness that collective brain power, you you harness that collective spirit. Um, you you just end up with so much more in the long run. Thanks, Polsky, by the way, for banning those uh, <laughs> bots. Yes. Yeah. Oh God, they're the worst. Yeah. Splat, 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 splat. And here is is where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone catches that reference, so the Plato game, splat. Uh, splat. <laughs> yeah. Plato Hero Quest, Lego Hero Quest. I mean. Yes. Make it happen. Yep. Fans, let's, let's fans are already fans are already doing it, so why not get on the bandwagon? <laughs> now, I have had people say, well, if they see a fan thing and they just blatantly copy it and sell it, there that's going to be like such a backlash from the community to do something like that. Yes. I mean, think of the D and D uh, OGL crap and what they were saying that they could do before people, you know, right? Yes, thundered down their throat about it, uh, rightfully so. So 
there's maybe a little of that. At the same time, I mean, it seems clear to me that Avalon Hill has used fan feedback in developing their new stuff, um, whether it's digital or physical. So I guess we probably won't see the last of that, and that's fine. But I mean, yeah, what if they came up with a, an official Avalon Hill like HeroQuest builder? It's like, what would be the point? Okay, well, we've got the official one and we've got the unofficial one. Maybe the company at some point in the future decides to discontinue it. I mean, going back to the app, like, will they extend it again or will they discontinue it? Doesn't matter right. because the fans have their own versions. And what if the HQuest Master Guide decides, you know what, I can't afford this bandwidth anymore. I got to spend more time with my family. I'm just taking this site down and it's gone. Okay. Fair. Yep. But somebody else could spring up with something else or maybe he sure. could make it open source or maybe like, maybe it'd be like uh yield in where it's like, yeah, I'm Dwayne Egan yes. and I can't do this anymore. Oh, and, and that is what I, that's Adventures. what I advocate. That's yeah. what I advocate. Pass, pass so it like if you pay it forward, if you take HQuest builder, you take HQuest master mm -hmm. and you just publish that up on GitHub or whatever. So anybody can just download it and, and look at it and see how it's built, see how it's, you know, whatever, how it functions. Yeah. Um, even if nobody takes it up immediately, it, it's available. Somebody eventually, if they want to, and they, they have the te technical know-how, can pick that up and, and carry that legacy on. And the more that that happens, the more, you know, HQuest Builder could, or HQuest Master could, could expand. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I, I've got a uh, uh, MentorBot, for example. That, that's that's openly published on. I on love GitHub. MentorBot. Yeah. If you want to download it and run it on your own server, you can do it. I mean, I, I don't. Uh, oh, I don't. I don't where, put any restrictions on it. Where can Where can our friends download uh, MentorBot? Uh, that would be on GitHub. Um, I can provide a link. Uh, yeah. Dot com slash something. Yeah, uh, but everybody can chat. you you can you can very freely and openly look at the code for MentorBot if you want to. I'll post it in chat here. Yeah, we use MentorBot to roll our dice. So I mean, absolutely, take a look at those. Are, it's uh, written in Python, um, but you you are free to check that out and uh, run it on your own server if you want. And I've actually helped people out in um, HeroQuest fans. Nice who are running their own servers uh that wanted to have a dice roller cool. um i help i help them like get get that up and running on their own server so very important to have those pink dice and the transparent uh 100 yeah. <laughs> yep. absolutely yeah. um but it's people. all freely available and I, I feel like if you did something like that with hquest builder where you know it, it, as long as it's freely available Somebody will eventually pick it up and carry it on. Mm -hmm. And the community is large enough that you get enough people within that community and a handful of them are technically know how, you know, have that technical know how. It will continue to to develop and 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 stay active forever, you know, to, to address your concern about um, what if one person eventually says, I yeah. don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Well, hey dozens of people have taken up this this mantle right. and, and can run it and so yeah. hero quest can you know that that online version of the app can live forever yeah i mean personally i as a physical board game i hate the idea of hero quest going all digital and going into that realm yes, where a, a company or an individual can shut it all down because you get people that get burned out you get people that quit the scene, you know, too much criticism. They can't handle it. And they they take sure. their toys and go home. Um, that yeah, happens. Human, human beings are not, not um, they are not built to withstand that much negative criticism. Yeah. <laughs> we just can't do it. You know, you, no. you get, you get enough of that and you just want to just bail well, out of in, it. It's so. not fun anymore. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, but at the same time, like as a physical board game, yeah, you've got copies out there, but it gets harder and harder to find ones that are in good shape. So having the digital as a backup that people can print and play or use the ideas to create their own stuff or to know about it and create demand so that a company like Hasbro goes, yeah, let's revive this brand. 
you know, if there's enough interest. Like all that's very important. So you really need both. So yeah, if you can't get together with your local people to play, you know, HQuest Master. I mean, we, we use the companion app incorrectly on my stream a couple of times. Um, I actually uh, shared it up on my screen using uh, BlueStacks. And I did what I always do, which was people tell me where to move the character and I move it for them. Um, except that I was using the app instead of the physical board. So, I mean, that's possible too. But yeah, there is definitely utility in being able to like actually click on your own dice, like with MentorBot, like we do, um, and maybe even yes. click on your own piece, pick it up and move it, which Tabletop Simulator lets you do. But Tabletop Simulator, you know, requires you to buy it from Steam. You got to be on a PC. Correct. You got to learn right. the interface, which is a little it's clunky. Oh, yeah. it's beyond a little clunky. It's, it's <laughs> freaking horrible. It's muck clunky. Yeah, if you've been using it for years, it's probably no big deal. But a lot of people just like, oh, hey, let's do a pickup game of HeroQuest. Uh, I got to do all this other stuff. For, I got to jump through all these other hoops first. Yeah, and I felt really bad for you guys. Like, um, oh, what was his name? He was in our, uh, he was in the Discord for a while. Uh, Ajax. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he was in here for a while, and he was trying to get people to join his Foundry game. Oh, Foundry, and yes. Yeah. Several other people have tried to get uh, people to join their tabletop simulator games, and nobody joins them. That's because too bad. Ta tabletop simulator is such a pain in the ass. See, you heard it no. here. It's it's nothing against those people and their desires. It's just that it's not at all. Unless yeah. unless you have a community like the other HeroQuest Discord server, where pretty much all they do is advertise, "Hey, I've got a tabletop simulator game." join yeah you know like hang out those I, people are foundry is even easier yeah. foundry you just need a browser oh that's nice you just you just join right on the browser but even then people won't do it and it's yeah it's it, it sucks yeah well i guess uh i've learned to kind of be i mean on the one hand you're like advertising yourself constantly like hey 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 you know i got this thing join you know give it a try I mean, I still have people that have been in the Discord for a long time, and they're like, I've never actually played. I've never watched any of your videos. I'm like, dude, just just, just watch just a little join. bit, and, and you'll, no you'll pressure. see. Yeah. yeah. You don't have if to worry. If you join, and, and 20 minutes in, you don't you don't enjoy it, you just leave. We don't and care. You did. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, that's the other thing. Uh, you know, going back to the whole, uh, you've got to buy all 14 expansions to, to get into this game. Yeah, I think and the 50 character packs. <laughs> people people get scared, I think, by my streams. And I've tried to, like, dispel that notion where they go, oh, man, it's four hours. So I got to commit to four hours to play with these guys. And, and I got to talk. Get it. Yeah, you're going to I got to show voice. my face. No, yeah, no, 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 no. It's like, no, no, no. It's not like that. I mean, I've done games where people are just typing, you know. It's harder. Sure. It's harder, but it can be done. And yeah, you don't have to show up every single time. You don't have to be there for the whole time. I've shortened the sessions to make it easier because I know sure. people have got lives outside of this game. I mean, lucky you, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jacer, Jacer had a comment. Sorry. Yeah. Jacer says uh, www.hquestbuilder.com slash pound. Any um, of our ready to play is... with Master QD on the Community Quest tab? I can't always talk. Correct. I yes. Has has Jacer submitted stuff there? I feel like he has. He might have. Or to, to H Quest Master rather. But one thing I want to say about Jacer, tenacious guy, and I'm glad to hear that he survived the storm because that video ended in kind of <laughs> uh, cl uh, cliffhanger manner. Like you hear the sirens, like yes. gotta go. <laughs> Oh crap! Um, yeah, so really talented guy. He makes lots of stuff on uh, War Builder. He always has some idea of like, let's just turn this junk into something really cool. Like, go for it. Or oh, you need like three different rule variations for this situation. Boom! You know, I, I love that. Um, but yes. but I mean, he he just has a a, a phone. And so whenever we're playing with Jacer, we always have to think, okay, well, what can he use on his phone? We can't just assume that, yeah, he can get on Steam and use tabletop simulator. But tell me, is Foundry something you can use on a portable 
mobile device? Um, you you technically you can, although Foundry does not officially have touch support. Uh, so you gotta so plug you, in the keyboard. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure your phone could handle it, but um, controller. the actual the actual interface that loads up is not actually uh, touch supported, unfortunately. Oh, he says so. yes to both. Yes to both. Oh, really? Oh, Maybe cool. the newest version has it. Hey. I should look into. I have Foundry. I just haven't downloaded the latest version, but maybe well, the latest version has there's, um, there's, touch there's some, support. There's so many tools out there, and you just have to find what works for you when you're trying to play HeroQuest remotely. Sure. I mean, a lot of these yeah. people, we would never play if we relied on meetups. I mean, I would love to meet up with some of you guys at Gen Con if we have any time at all to play HeroQuest. But if we don't, we don't. But I mean, well, you can't rely on HeroQuest. Yeah. Yeah. At least Hero Quest, maybe some more quests. I'm, I'm down yeah, for that. Yeah, you know, Harry Potter quests, something like that. Um, what? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, something. No, yeah, it, it's just like, who's going to be the poor guy that's going to have to schlep uh, four quests all the way there? But yeah, I'm, I'm down. I don't care. It's like you, oh. you're, you'll wear like a big like headdress and you take the headdress off and it's like you open it up and it's just like the orc quest figures and you've got like the board strapped to your back. And you've got the, like the the maps are like rolled up in your like, oh yeah pant legs. I, I I've got the absolutely massive uh, suitcase board game backpack. Yeah, so I just strap it to my back. And yep. Come in with uh, tons of stuff. Please don't mug me. So yeah. yes, to both was submitting quests with builder and coded some for master too. Yeah. I thought oh so. oh okay. No, that makes more sense. Yeah, there's a little bit of a delay. Um, so is, is it uh, Death Tone? Is one of the guys working on a foundry, and I want to say Verg was working on something in foundry as well. Like, there's a couple there's, people. There's several yeah. people have been working on foundry, foundry. mods for that. Ajax was one of them, Ajax. and I haven't seen him. He must have left. I oh must man, have left the Discord. Sorry, because I haven't seen him talk for a while, and I know he's pretty pissed because nobody was <laughs> showing up to the Sorry, his games. Ajax. Sorry, well, man. Yeah, I mean, it it took me like a year i think before we got started I was, with the I was game say, even kurgan the the freaking founder of the whole discord you run a game and two three people show up i mean we don't need you a know, lot. per week yeah. we don't need a lot but a two three you know and and that's the main person for the whole discord let alone somebody, some random guy who just shows up and says, "Hey, show up to my foundry thing." Yeah, you can't, you can't just assume that it's going to be like, "Okay, let's play oh. Halo," and oh, we got thirty-two people. Yeah, boom. Yeah, most people don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a, well, a social thing or something. People I mean, don't want that people stress. are bashful. People, people are bashful. Yeah, and yeah. It, the fact that our games are streamed live is an extra layer. So maybe, yeah, people are maybe thinking, "Oh, I'll be embarrassed," or, you know whatever right. i'll come across yes. as like silly or people will laugh at me or whatever i mean we're not we're gonna laugh with you but um when when i started out streaming the games well before we streamed the games i played on zoom back when zoom was free and our sessions were like four to six hours long and we showed our faces and it was excuse me it was like totally different than what we do with Hero yeah. Quest fans. Like, I've tried to make it accessible and low pressure, very casual, very open ended, no, no harm, no foul. And I've appreciated the people that have joined. Like, I think very rarely have I gotten any, on anybody's nerves directly, like in the midst of a game. I mean, that can happen anytime. But sure. Yeah. You know, and, you know, occasionally we get bots that show up and try to spam the chat, but it's usually not, not a big deal. I mean, and I and I roll with the fact that we've allowed that interactivity with the chat, so there's going to be interruptions like all the time. Like some of our quests have gone on way longer than intended, just because people don't want it to end. So they're just like, more monsters, more potions, more monsters, more yeah. potions. Like, man, we're like one door away from the end. You know what? If people are having a good time, who am I to judge? Let's let it ride out. <laughs> So, but, but that's how we do it. Like somebody else maybe does it a different way. Like I've been to several other hero quest streams on Twitch and some of those guys, they don't pay any attention to the chat. And it's like, okay, as a streamer, yeah. you're thinking, oh, that's bad. 
but from their perspective, they're immersed in the game they're playing. We're just observers. So that's just a different approach, you know, different way to do it. And yep. it's fine. Nothing wrong with it. But yeah, I mean, some people like to go to the, you know, local game shop get a game out and play but maybe it's 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 harder to just grab random strangers you know unless you're in an environment like gen con where people go there specifically to see stuff demoed and participate and you know try to get swag and all that sort of thing so yeah i would to to people like ajax i would say don't give up i mean yeah. just roll with it sometimes you're 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 gonna have this plan and it's not gonna go according to plan so you just make new plans yeah try different things you know maybe you have to establish that community first i mean i spent a year just basically just blabbing into the microphone until we finally got the infrastructure so to speak to to start having those uh live games i will point out um jason's link there in um uh Uh, twitch chat yes so that takes you to one of the quests he made Oh, and there's a and, and when you go to it, there's a link at the bottom that says "Play on HQuest Master." So don't even look at the quest. Just click on "Play" uh, at the bottom. Click on "Play on HQuest Master." And there's a great example of um, a homebrewed thing that you could play with your group. Um, that's that's totally separate of the uh, the officially supported app, and nice. yet. Still, still provides you with a really great experience. Well, and something else I realized when I first saw HQuest Master, I was like, "Wait a minute, why is everything like black and white? Like that looks so yeah. weird and boring." Well, you can tinker with it and change it to put the colors back in, to put the textures back in. It's not just one thing. So you may have seen that on various streams, including AshQuest. Um, he knows he's used a lot more, but I mean, like it's customizable and just like hquest builder it's constantly being developed so you may see it and a few months go by and yeah there's maybe new features new updates feedback give them give them your feedback whoever the person is that's making it i'm yeah. sure they like that sort of thing <laughs> Wardicon, guilty of of helping quest drag on see and and as far as drag on you know dragons uh monster conga dragon. Yeah, I have had a blast with the interactivity. I'm so glad we did it because a lot of times, like, we're at a a point in the quest where nothing much is happening. It's just march to the end. And people have made it interesting because they start throwing monsters in. And it's like, what are some ways that I can insert these monsters into the story? So, like, I have to come up with, oh, this guy, like, came up from the sewers. This other guy was hiding inside the coffin. Or, oh, this guy, like you know, split off from the other monster or he teleported in, you know, <laughs> just weird. Oh, the guy that you thought you killed, you know, he sprang back up again. You know, it's just, it's just kind of fun. Or, you know, the mercenary is at the door and he's like, he has to run all the way <laughs> to where everybody else is. And like, got here as quickly yeah. as I could. You know, that it's, it's, it's something for me to do as the GM, you know, I wouldn't have yes. to I've imposed those burdens on myself, but it's like, I like the spontaneity of having to come up with stuff. And yet I still reserve that freedom to myself. Like just because somebody spawned a monster and doesn't mean I have to put him right now. I can wait until an opportune yeah. time. Cause I know it's coming, you know, to, to bring him out. It's like, it's like I haven't forgotten you. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks, Jaser, for that example. That's cool. And see, I, it's I have It's awesome. It's awesome. I love that kind of stuff. I, I haven't played a lot of extra quests. I mean, I, I'm still just focused hardcore on trying to get through these official ones. I mean, we're almost to the end of Mage of the Mirror. We're almost to the end of Rise of the Dread Moon. We're going to finish them probably around the same time, the way things are going. And I figure at our current rate of speed... Um, <clears throat> Is my voice a little bit here? We'll run out of official content in three years. <laughs> so that's how it goes. Wardicon, good. 
So, Ribby, your comment was, my players got annoyed on my last Prophecy of Teller quest because I added so many additional monsters via my Dread deck. They got a lots, of little mi lots of little mini-bosses that I added in there, but... Uh... Like they them. they still they still absolutely trounce their way through it. So mm -hmm. I'm like okay, I, I think I need to uh, increase the difficulty again. The the deck is stacked in favor of the heroes, except big time. Yeah, except in uh, Mage of the Mirror and the Frozen Horror. But even then, it's possible to get them strong enough that they'll be okay for the most part. I mean, the the sheer amount of magic that I give my heroes is absurd. Absolutely absurd. But I wanted to do that because one of the biggest complaints that I've always heard growing up was that the wizard gets a bum deal. He gets a raw yeah. deal because he, he has these awesome spells that are situational and then he only gets to use them once. So then you've got like Bohemius doing double genie on uh, a giant wolf right out of the gate. It's like beautiful. Yes. Love it. <laughs> You know, and it's like, so you take the unfairness of these quests, you know, with apologies to the developers who did the best they could, you know, with the crunch. Uh, but yeah, you got these rooms packed with these absurd monsters and it's just like, just the feeling of, okay, well, we burned at least one guy. <laughs> now let's, you know, go forward. Yeah. And the wizard gets to shine, you know, gets a, gets a moment. That's an interesting contrast between the, the wizard from Hero Quest and um, like magic users from say descent or or quest hmm. because in those games they can continuously cast spells and there's no like card to flip that you know you don't get for the rest of the quest Should they they, they all they're almost like a, a ranged class that's going hmm. kind to of continuously cast yeah I um mean, i guess and, that, that makes music uh music magic less special but it certainly gets rid of that complaint that oh my magic is right right it it just lets them up. do more on their turns more. instead of like kind of cowering in the corner or quest in particular um the the one main character i play with is mandar who's like the uh the uh magic user not mandar um, not to be confused <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um there's a uh, he has certain abilities that that will trigger when he's me when he's within melee range so like uh, like a pushback effects and stuff, which can cause extra damage. So it's almost like there's a, a slight encouragement for the the uh, magic user to get in there to get into the fray and attempt to attack things, uh, you know, up close and personal. Whereas in Hero Quest that doesn't exist. So it's it's a very interesting contrast between the two. Sure, different ways to do it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's like oh, you you got you got um, melee range and you successfully landed your magic attack. You just push that guy back two squares and he slammed it into a wall and took extra damage and died. Awesome, nice. <laughs> that's really cool. Yep. Um, I would love that extra challenge. Keeps things interesting and different. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I you almost have to in those later requests. You start to have to add that stuff in. Yeah. Or, I, or I the heroes just trounce through it. I tend to. It's funny because we we're talking about the people that you know need the rules as written. I have a tendency right. to want to formalize my homebrew stuff. Like if I do it more than once, I want to print it on a card. I want to get it proxy miniature to use. I want to write it down somewhere. And yet it never ends because then the next time you think of some cool rule and you do it a couple of times, it's like, okay, now I want to do that. And so it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. But sometimes you have to just set that stuff aside because it just doesn't fit in that particular adventure. So, I mean, we've done sessions where I didn't use the evil wizard deck. Like I just never brought it out, you know, or we didn't do the elite monsters. It just wasn't appropriate. But other times it's like, you know what, this would be a time that we should start doing that, you know? And a lot of it is controlled by the heroes, too. So the uncommon feats, like, maybe people just don't want to do it. I think I, I, I'm trying to remember who it was, but there was somebody who was just like, nah, I'm, I don't even, like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you don't have to. It's, it's just there if you, if you want it, you know. 
But then you get other people who are just like, yeah, I'm going to try this every turn. <laughs> it's like, well, maybe maybe that's too much. <laughs> I actually have an official document uh, that I've printed off with all of our house rules that we use at our table for HeroQuest. At your table, so, or you mean like at HeroQuest fans' table? Uh, at, at our at my table, my oh, live cool. table. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like Good if idea. everyone wants to know what rules are we using, um, they're not official rules, but what rules, you know, so there, there is uh, some kind of a reference so that it's not just totally random. It's not Calvin Ball that you're playing. Yeah. If anybody yeah. gets that reference. And, and, and so every, <laughs> I did not get that reference. Oh, Calvin and Hobbes, old comic. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Um, so if anyone is like, oh, what, what, are we doing that's different here you know you can look at this document and be like oh, okay that's that's the joke is the little the, kid where is, this is makes from. up the rules as he goes along so that he'll always I, win. okay i got you <laughs> yeah we we don't do that i mean i've obviously made up rules mm. and our group has made up rules but uh there is a a a context there is a a framework that they can reference to to understand where it's coming from yeah and, and why that's, <clears throat> that's yeah. good yeah yeah, and I think that's an important thing. Um, I, I I fully agree with that, and I think reserving the right to change your mind to modify things as as you go. Sometimes a rule is put in place for a specific reason, and maybe that reason no longer exists, so it just kind of fades away, <laughs> it goes away, um, or or whatever. Or yeah, it's just it's time to do something else. How is it called? Ribby's Law and Fancy Stovetops. <laughs> Ribby's Remarkable Rules. Yes, you are there. Correct, it is. Sir. You are correct, sir. But yep. as long as somebody, yeah, you know, as long as everybody has something to reference back to, be like, okay, this is where this is coming from. This is why we made this choice. Um, like, like we combine searches. We have uh, fast mm -hmm. travel. If, if they're yeah. backtracking back the way they came or something like that. Yeah. So that we're all, all most most rules are um besides the dread deck are designed around the idea of just um uh, quality of life increase. Let's 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 speed up speed up the, the speed less, up the games. The less yeah, boring so, or the more boring parts of the game. Yeah. Let, let's get rid of yeah. the the traveling around part. Let's get to the action. Let's get to the the exploring yeah. rooms and and attacking monsters and things like that. I've always been of the opinion that rolling dice is fun. And that's why we do yeah. it. But I will say at a certain point before the introduction of <laughs> of uh, MentorBot, I was rolling dice for myself and for everyone else physically. And it's a little tedious. Yeah. After those four hour sessions, it's like, man, I'm getting tired. <laughs> like I like rolling dice, but even even I am reaching my limit for this. I mean, yeah. This is like yeah, all night it's... all night in Vegas without the money, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I got lots of sets of dice. Uh for the uh yeah. the, the physical table so everyone gets their yeah. own everyone set, gets their own basically. set although there is something interesting um this has been a long time now a few years sadly um but our neighborhood gaming group when we when we still attend it regularly is we would have the dice box that we would pass like you roll your dice then you pass it like it was almost like a ritual like you're just passing the hat around <laughs> You know, but yeah, if yeah. everybody has their own dice, of course, then you get people that play with the dice until it's their turn. And it's like, you know, all that stuff, just fidgety stuff. But I mean, I, I would always do that when I would play games like, you know, I make piles with my poker chips. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would always make little sandwiches. This was what I would do. Um, my family would play Tripoli, which is a great combination of card games. And you got your poker chips. So I'd have black and white and I'd make like the Oreo cookies with them because the two black and then the white in the middle and then the, the yeah. reverse oreos with the white and the black and i just have like this nice it's like reverse a, oreos yeah what vanilla that's well, not possible it's like the uh, uh vanilla wafers and then the chocolate frosting <laughs> all right fair enough like get get out <laughs> get the hell out of here get out of my life heresy <laughs> Yeah. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Get That's off funny. my plane, or or train, depending on which movie. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I think we've pretty much come to the end here. Um, Jungles of Delthrac. We're probably going to find out about all about it 
by Gen Con, if not before. Keep an eye out for those various conventions, though. And also keep an eye out for HeroQuest Day, if they're going to redo that. Maybe it would be uh, a chance, but I kind of feel like, yeah, with the scaled back publicity, community outreach, we may just be doing what we're doing now, scrounging for tidbits on HeroQuest news until it actually happens. But it's always great to hear that cool stuff is happening in the fan community, regardless of what the company is doing. Oh, yeah. Yep. So keep up the good work, all you people out there. I Rhino on June for Jungle. I Rhino. Yeah, I'm trying to interpret oh. that. Oh, Bohemius, are you? Oh, um, rhin, he rhinos, thunks. rhinos. Okay, rhinos. Yeah, there was a thing in Hero Quest. So they made Hero Quest, right? They made Space Crusade and they made Battle Masters. And there was going to be another game uh, that was never made. There was like chariot racing, like the, another of these Games Workshop um, Milton Bradley collaborations. And it was going to be With a long rhinos game. as the horses or what? Either that or they talked about, I think in the Stephen Baker interview, they were going to use like rhinos as a, a creature that was going to be in a Battlemasters expansion, but never got released. Like a, Okay. I guess like a war elephant or a war rhino or or maybe someone would be riding it. I mean, you know, it's something along those rhinos, lines. Rhinos, rhinos, remarkable riders. Yes. Wizard chariot race. Uh, yep. That's what it was called? No, but that's what I would have called it. <laughs> it's easy. Yep. It's directly well, what it is. There is a there is a rhino sculpt out there. Uh if you'll find it I think in Toka's pages. Toka was this guy. He um, had a website, a blog, where he showed like the the three ups or the four ups of these oh. unreleased expansion, Hero Quest expansions. I'm I'm getting to the point. Uh, so when they make these miniatures, I don't know if they do this anymore. Uh, it's probably a totally different process. But they would make like a large sculpture and then they would shrink it down. So yes. there exist these large sculptures that people just took home because the project was canceled from the Dwarf Quest Pack and the Wizard Quest Pack that were planned for 92, 93 that never came out. One of the characters was called a Rock Mole. And it looked, it had like the, the head of a rhino and like a rat body, I think. And it was supposed to be like a large creature. But yeah, it's out there. You can find it. It's really weird. You know, it's this cream colored plastic. And it's like, what the heck is this? It's like, well, it would have been in Hero Quest at some point. It just never never got done so there's there's designs out there there's uh like some kind of rock golem or rock man type of character there's dwarves evil dwarves and female dwarves um there's like a saber tooth tiger there's a carnivorous cave worm <laughs> uh there's giant spiders <laughs> so yeah, and I mean, they look kind of goofy because, you know, we don't have the nostalgia of 30 years behind these characters. But it's it's just kind of cool to think, like, okay, that could have been in, a, in an expansion. And, I mean, who knows? They could always reach into that, um, you know, for ideas for the future. Although, I think unless the community has embraced it, it's kind of like, why would you? Because you're reusing certain ideas because you know there's nostalgia attached to it. And people expect to see it. When with something like that, it's like, here's the Minotaur, here's the Carnivorous Cave Worm. It's like, the what? <laughs> like, come again? What? <laughs> it's like the thing that you wanted. Oh, I didn't even know it existed. Oh, okay. Well, here it is. <laughs> like, okay. Well, you could just make up something new and sell it to me. Like, okay, it's a, it's an army guy, but he's got a samurai sword and a jetpack. Like, okay, cool. Heroscape reference. Bohemia says, I had one of those chariot of the wood elf for the longest time. I didn't find rules for it, just recently found out this unreleased game. Yeah, there's a lot of unreleased games. I I really wish I had done a full formal sit-down interview with Craig Von Ness, um, one of the principal designers of the original Heroscape with Stephen Baker. But he was saying something like, 
you know, I asked him for his reaction to the HasLab campaign, you know, failing. Of course, now I could ask him, like, well, how do you feel about Renegade, you know, picking it up and releasing it? But he was saying something like, the whole point of the business is you have all these ideas and most of them never get used. Or, you know, you dust them off later and use part of it in something else. You know, it's just, it's not, you know, you come up with a perfect idea and sell it. It's like more like you go through tons of different um, phases before it comes out. And his whole, I don't know if he said his, his attic or his basement or, you know, he had some area that was just full of like unused stuff, unused concepts. So it was just kind of interesting to hear that from, you know, somebody who'd been in the industry a long time. But you can't take it personally, because otherwise you just you just be broken. All right. Well, Ribby, uh, thanks for sticking it out here with us. Um, any closing thoughts yeah. on any of the stuff we've talked about or? Closing thoughts. Um... Be good to yourselves and each other. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, not really. I mean, uh, what's it called? Shining light, first light, first light, first light. Um, I think a Metro Last Light video game. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we'll, we're we're just gonna wait and see on that one. We have no idea what's going on with that yeah. yet, but uh, they're gonna have built-in uh, Gundam lights inside the translucent miniatures so they can light up. Gundams. Are, are, we're piloting mechs now. It's a Gundam. Yes. Yep. They'll oh, be like shit. steampunk, uh, <laughs> steampunk yeah, dwarf like piloting your giant golems or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. By magic, of course. No. Yeah. yeah magic. Yeah, first light. Uh, well, but I but don't know. We we might be playing Jungles of Deltrak in August. Think about we that. We might be. I mean, hey. Or if, we might if they're, be... if they're offering it, I'm sitting down and playing it for sure. So there's there's a video on YouTube on XSC3, Home of HeroQuest fans, not a big deal, um, of Inspector Retro and I at Gen Con. And we're taking turns. Like, we've got the microphone and our cameras. And, like, one of us is, like, upside down, like, trying to read the bottom of the glass shelf in the case the display case at gen con like reading off the card to the other one who was trying to record it <laughs> so that was the kind of thing we were doing and of course uh when we finally got uh chris nato's attention he actually opened up and was like here here's the map here's what it looks like <laughs> there's your, that might be your scoop you know i was like oh yes and i'll put out before uh before you sign off stream here yeah. um in the the ean document Yes. Um, numerous Beyblade products are listed, so you know if you're a big fan of Beyblade, I'm just saying. You know, if you want to just uh, like rip and rip and zip, and uh, attack things. I'm just saying that's fun. The Beyblade. <laughs> I've never played Blade, Blade, Beyblade in my life, but it's funny to me. The World of Beyblade Championships. It's uh, it reminds it reminds me of like Pogs. It's like a, a yeah. version of Pogs essentially. It's, a, it's, it's an funny ancient to me. Uh, an ancient rite of gentlemanly combat. There's a there's <laughs> totally a really is. there's a really funny commercial. Like I thought I made it up in my head, but there's a it was very similar. It's like I want to say these guys and they're like in a I don't know like in a like a concrete like bunker or something and you know there's like chain link fences like it's like an underground fighting you know kumite or something and it's like yeah <laughs> they're playing <laughs> beyblade or or whatever it reminds me of the uh um was the 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 classic commercial um cr crossfire oh you know you you, you you do like crossfire but it's beyblades hmm. i'm just saying yeah um you know so come come August first, I'm just saying I might bring some Beyblades and we might just have to throw down. Yep. Yep. You might not make it out alive, but <laughs> right. at least he went down swinging. Right. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yep. So whatever whatever it is you're into, yeah, Gen Con has a lot of lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Down with that turbo sling. Yeah, I don't know the first thing about it. I don't either. I mean, I've I've, I've walked I feel like it's the, fun though. I walked through like the, we would the have toy fun. aisle. I walked through the toy <laughs> aisle at various stores, and it's like you got this plastic bin or something, and you put the little 
the devices right. inside it and i don't know they it reminds me other... of, it reminds what me of that? different different toys different because they had um a beyblade hero quest yeah crossfire has the the guns they fired like little bbs and you had to fire the bbs at each other or something or you had to fire it at some other yeah uh, there were like there were little puck. um yeah move. they're like little there's two little pucks in the middle so you shoot it to make it and go... you shoot at those and try to get those into the opposing players like little tray yeah. area yeah so it's like and by the time shoot. you were done playing your fingers were so tired from firing clicking yeah yeah those little guns it was so fun like hunger hunger hippos meets a shooting gallery hey oh my god but it went on for like 15 minutes straight nice i never had that game um Another one that I remember was called like spinjas or something. It was it would it'd be these little tops, and you would like yank the cord out of the toy and it would spin like a gyroscope, and they would like smash into each other. Um, that almost sounds like Beyblades. Honestly. Yeah, that's that's I don't I'm like I said I've never played with Beyblades, but. It makes me think about that, and I wonder if that's there was some connection, or if it was if one was a knockoff of the other, because a lot of times that sort of happens with these yeah. things. You got your <laughs> Tamagotchi. Uh, <laughs> all things to be um, played at uh, Gen Con. Yep, all kinds of things. So yeah, if there's a game that you just want to dust off, you know, that right to to determine who is the true like you know master of Beethoven. of everything. Yep. <laughs> Like you, you do a you got you got to play a, a hand of Magic the Gathering, and then you gotta like then, then you gotta throw down some Beyblades. You to... gotta command your uh, your Warhammer <laughs> army, and then you gotta play a hand of poker. Then you gotta like you know get in the ring and like you know spar with the guy, and then you <laughs> then you gotta <laughs> run around the building and you get a rip and zip <laughs> on that on the Beyblade. It's all comes That's back funny. to the Beyblade. All right. Well, with that. Um, yes. Everybody, take care. Uh, thanks for joining us on the Redcast. It's uh, <laughs> it's not the same without. I mean, there's all kinds of other topics that we'll be yeah. talking about we, next we, time. But you gotta have the bus here. You just yeah. gotta have him. Yep. So we'll catch catch him next time. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get uh, we'll get Car- oh, Carl Casey to play us out. I don't know what that means. There's no words. We'll do it live! To play us out. What does that what mean? Does, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, have a good night. And we'll uh, hopefully do some Hero Quest tomorrow on Hero Quest fans. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Yep. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.